about traditional Korean culture and everything. Oh, dogs are angry again. The are angry dogs. Hello, buddy. Hey, what are you doing, bud? Hey. What are you doing? What are you doing? About to start my bike ride to Gijang-gun. Stay tuned, glasses are fogged up. Train's about to come any second. See you soon. I think this is the only convenience store in Korea that doesn't sell alcohol. The first time I saw that, I was super shocked. Hello everybody, here we are at Yilgwang Beach. There's the beach in the background, you can see. And it looks a little bit dreary, you know, it's a little bit cloudy, overcast day today. But uh, it is the middle of January, it's like January 24th, 2021. So it's not the bright sunny summer day, but in the summertime it's a really beautiful beach and the, the sand is very clean and, and kept nice and the water is also clean too. There's no major pollutants over here. This is the, uh, the East Sea over here to our, uh, to our back. And then uh, it's a good place. I come here in the summertime and it's nice, it's family friendly, uh, it's not too busy, not too crazy. If you want to have a nice relaxing uh, weekend experience on the beach, come out here, or maybe bring your kids, whatever. They also have a little, where is it? They have a ship right there. You can see there's the ship. And they have like musical performances on there and like games and stuff that your kids can play with. So it's really fun. And then lastly, over here, there's like a little fishing village that you have to, that I'm gonna go bike out to. It's really, really cool and old and everything. So we're gonna take a look at that next. So keep tuned. Everybody. So here we are at the Hakri Maur. So if you live in Busan, go to your friends and ask them if you've ever been to the Hakri Maur and chances are they probably haven't gone here. I've spent many many years exploring Busan and this is one of like the smallest, most rural parts of Busan that you can find that's pretty much unknown. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people come here for whatever reasons, but your average Joe or Kim is probably not going to know this place. And I'm reading the I'm reading the sign here saying that it has uh, more than 360 years of history. So it says 360 years ago, uh, Gu, Huang, Yu, and Sunjo family names uh, came here. So uh, very interesting. So that's that's the thing about Korea. You know, you can just come to some little spot like this. That's seemingly insignificant and there's definitely like a rich history to it so that's one of the things I really love about Korea everywhere you go there's a, there's a story and a history to it so pretty cool all right so we are in the Hakli Hakri Hakni Mar and uh, as you can see it's popping here they probably get a lot of noise complaints at night this is so crazy no I'm just joking it's a really it's a really small little I mean when you think about Maur it's really a Maur behind me is uh, the the uh, Coast Guard, Coast Guard Police, and it is a beautiful little village right on the ocean. We got the East Sea to us. Um, there's a fewer older style houses here, like this on my right, and they have some uh, fishing facilities. So I guess some people uh, go out fishing. I guess a lot of people here make their livelihoods by fishing, and there's some restaurants. There's a few new buildings coming up, which is pretty cool. 
So everything in Korea is developing, even these little towns like this are, they're up to standard, like the, a lot of the buildings are new and you know, they got clean water and all that stuff, so it is nice to see. Unfortunately, like that, you, on my right you see it says Mei Mei right there, so that means for sale. And unfortunately, due to coronavirus, I think a lot of these restaurants have taken a huge hit. I mean, if it wasn't a coronavirus era right now, they, they could be thriving. Even in the wintertime, people you know, come out from the city, come out to this little village here, get some nice seafood. So, but unfortunately, due to coronavirus, it looks like a lot of these restaurants have gone under. Which is, uh, you know, it's devastating to the lives of these people. We invested everything in the businesses, got a car behind me. Okay. Anyways, uh, you don't have to worry too much about the dangers of biking in one of these little town villages. It's literally like one or two roads in the whole town. But here along the coast, you can see another car. Uh, you see like the ocean and it, it's pretty beautiful and uh, it's crazy to think this town has more than 360 years of people living here. It's, it's pretty pretty real but they do have a 7-Eleven here which is essential. It's not a, I mean it's, it's nothing in Korea. If you don't have a CU or a GS or whatever in Korea then you're, you're really nowhere. <laughs> so um, Alright, so here we have some uh, seafood restaurants, so that would be delicious to go there in the middle of the summer, or well, actually any time, just go to one of these little restaurants to get fresh fish right out of the ocean, uh, it's not polluted or anything like this. We have a, some coffee shops here, and well, there's some people here, and they're all kind of just working, even though it's a Sunday, they're still out here working. Korean work ethic, right? Seven days a week. People are trying to sell some fish here, and yeah, I should probably put my mask up so I don't, even though we're outside and there's not that many people, but just be considerate. I should probably put my mask up. There are people around here. Um, but whenever, every time I put my mask up, I can't see. I got, uh, these classes are such a curse to me. Every time I put my mask up, I almost can't see anything. And uh, don't want to get hit by a car. All right, so now I'm in one of these little offshoots. There's like a little side road coming out of the, uh, off the main road, dogs are barking at me. They don't like me. Um, so I'm in this little, yeah, like I'm in like a little alleyway, I guess you could say Gormok in the actual town, village, so this is what it looks like. There's actually people living here and these houses look nice, <laughs> actually. Aside from parking, there's no parking here, but otherwise the houses are really nice. Glasses are fogging up again, can't see. Um, there's a cat over there. Let's go say hi to the stray cat. Oh, just ran away. Um, so yeah, this is... This is somebody's house. There's the cat. There's the cat. There's the cat right there. Let's see if it wants to come in the shot. So there is wildlife here. And uh, yeah, here we are in the village. We're walking around. And we have a traditional house here. Traditional roof. That's another thing. Um, there it is. That's a good shot, right? And then. Um, so Korean roofs do also have a very long history as well. I I went to a museum once and they had books, like just a series of books about everything about traditional Korean culture and everything. Oh, dogs are angry again. Don't have angry dogs. Hello, buddy. Yeah. Thankfully, they're not that scary. Just little dogs. If you come to Canada or whatever, or America, you'll see like gigantic dogs that are like just bristling to break out and kill you. So we have like some fishing equipment, some abandoned fishing equipment here, and more dogs barking at me. Sorry to everybody in the neighborhood that I'm disturbing, but I do want to show everybody. Hey, what are you doing, bud? Hey. What are you doing? What are you doing? I gotta show you guys this. Hey. Hey. 
Oh my god. That's crazy. There's like a dog on the roof barking at me. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Oh, yeah. He's angry. Anyways, the neighbors are probably gonna come out and tell me to, to, to get lost. Some aggravating their dog. And this is probably a military base here, so I shouldn't be filming it at all. Yeah, definitely won't be filming that military. All right, so we're gonna continue on in this little village here. And showing you the little houses here. Some of them are a little bit older and run down, and I really hope people aren't living in them, but maybe some people are still living in these little old houses. Like, they've just been living in them for, like, pre, pre his development. Like, this, this is a good example. There, there is a woman, actually, in that house, and, uh, She's probably been living in the house since who knows when, maybe the 60s or 70s. Basically before Korea industrialized, uh, some of these houses are still there. And then some people bought new houses. Some people bought land and then built new houses. Most of them are new houses in the village, I guess. It'd be a nice little place to retire. And it's very quiet. I bet in, in the nighttime it's really nice here. Very quiet on the ocean, very beautiful, serene. And um, so yeah, there's still some, some houses are a little bit older. Let's just go down here and see what it looks like. And yeah, I'm getting lost in this village. I mean, it's like a bunch of uh, twisting and turning little alleyways. It's really hard to know where I'm going, to be honest with you. I'm pretty good with my directions. I biked out here, no problem. But here is, here's actually a kind of a community center here. It's, uh, it's called the, it's like for elderly people. It's kind of like an elderly community people, uh, community center. And it also says Mudoi Shunta. So that's for uh, when it's hot outside, you can just go and, and cool down. So yeah, just want to show you this little neighborhood more. And uh, yeah, a second ago, one of the local women just saw me, like an Ajima, like an older woman, just saw me. Looked very wide eyed. Um, not because she's being rude or anything, because she's just so surprised to see this random uh, foreigner guy just want to be YouTuber just in the neighborhood filming stuff. I wasn't filming her or anything, but she was, she was very uh, surprised to see me here. I don't blame her. I don't think uh, many people come here to begin with, let alone foreigners. But uh, I'm sure some foreigners have come here before at some point. But uh, not for a long time, probably. Especially when I was coronavirus era, everybody's gone, right? All the foreigners, a lot of them left. So here they have this place called Loa Mansion. Looks pretty cool. It's like a coffee shop. Would be a nice place to come here one day in the summertime with friends and go on a date. Uh, looks like a really interesting brand new coffee shop. So uh, shout out to Loa Coffee. All right. So another thing that I'm noticing about this village is like there's a lot of people driving around with luxury cars. Is a little bit bizarre because this is anything but an affluent neighborhood in the city. But um, as you can see, some people, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of BMWs and Mercedes and stuff like that. Not that many, but a few just driving around town. And a lot of people in Busan, like on the weekends, they'll just drive out to Kijang. I guess they'll do their little uh, village exploring, like what I'm doing right here as well. So it's an interesting little phenomenon to see a lot of like luxury cars driving around this little town. But um, clearly people from the city that have money, uh, on the weekends a lot of their hobbies are driving out into the countryside and then exploring some little uh, rural areas like this, just like what I'm doing. So, pretty cool. This is a really cool house. It says Bang on the, on the door. It says Bang. So they must have made bread there at some point. And, uh, man finally. All right, so that's it for the Hadley Mauer. And just leaving out, just biking out. There's only one road into the place, and then a little circle road. And points kind of, so kind of like a circle once you get to the, the main road, at least like a circle kind of thing. Here we have some new, newer apartments here, that's pretty nice. I wonder who lives there.
But anyways, yeah, very interesting little village. Really happy to show you that. Uh, if you ever want to come out here, I will link you the location in the comments. And wow, the, uh, the salt in the air is so strong here. I think I'm getting hypertension just breathing. It's like giving me high blood pressure, all the salt in the air. So, uh, all right, stay tuned.